Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name's Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about something you should look out for when hiring a software development firm. <laughs> All right, so today I want to talk to those of you out there who might be thinking about hiring an offshore software development firm. Or not necessarily offshore, they could be onshore. It doesn't, the location doesn't really make a difference. But like, if you're like me, you get a lot of emails from software companies who say, hey, we're a software development firm, we specialize in uh, mobile application development, PHP, SharePoint, web, they'll list every technology in the world. By the way, if I ever see SharePoint, I stop reading. Just, just a little tip for those of you guys who are sending me those emails, right? So they'll list all the different um, technologies that they use and then a lot of times they'll list a lot of the apps that they've worked on, so like the portfolio. And, and most of the time, the apps aren't their apps, but they're their clients' apps. So. Right, so what I wanted to, to tell you about was some experiences that I've had. So one of the things that I think you should do is make, is when you look at those, that portfolio of applications, which by the way is really important, it's important to see what they've worked on before so you can see what kind of skills they have and everything, but you can't really see the code, you can just see the design and, and, the, and the flow of everything, which they may, may not have been their decision, but you, know, you can see if it's robust and everything like that. So. But I want to tell you a story about a company that I worked with before that, you know, it, it's, it's what makes me so cynical when I see those emails, right? So, I, you know, I, when I started doing apps, I, you know, I, was, I was started doing it myself, doing the code myself, and then I realized I just didn't have the time. I had, I had to work, I had the contract, I had family, I had so much stuff going on, so I thought I'll hire some developers, and I did. I hired a software development company. They, they had a portfolio of a few different apps, right? It wasn't, it wasn't a great deal, but I hired them, but they were experts because they, you know, they told me they were experts. By the way, I did see the code after they started, and you know, it, the code was not great, but I thought, okay, they're junior, I can live with this. They're really cheap, you know, we can continue going with this, right? Which is, you know, it's a trade-off. Uh, but then after a while, I started realizing that my apps were on their website. Like, they didn't ask me. They just, you know, all of a sudden my apps were on their website. So I said, you know, it kind of bothered me, but I thought, I don't know what the rules are here because I was still early, right? I thought, maybe that's just a thing, you know, that's, you know, I was their client. So I said, we've worked on, on you know, on EarSpy and this one and that one and that one. Right, so, and then, but some of them were like the, they were like, I knew that I had done, I had done the, the, the flow, I, I was the one who came up with the idea, and I went and hired elsewhere for the designers, because one of the problems I had in those early days was we had no design skills, and it, they, they, the company says, oh no, no, we got a designer, it's going to be perfect, right, and it looked terrible, everything looked terrible, right, so it, eventually you know, we went out and got other designers, so I was like, I, I was more like the, I wasn't the developer anymore, but I was more like the producer. I'm like, I'll get this guy from over here, this guy over here, these guys over here, or whatever. Everything worked went well, except that, you know, that they were kind of passing off my apps as their own, and it wasn't, they weren't even saying it was Overpass. So I, I kind of say, hey, can you just change it to put, we did this for Overpass at least, you know, all this stuff. And, you know, it, it took a while, but eventually they did. They, were just, they would just ignore those emails. But, and then, and then like a few months later, like, I was still working with them, and then I get, I was on their list, their email list that goes out, the ones that say, hey, we're Indian, or we're, sorry, we're not Indian specifically, but we're a software development ter uh, company and we specialize in these technologies, whatever. And it was like, we could do your mobile app for you and everything. And I'm thinking, hey, this is the company that I'm already working with and I've already done it. And all the apps that were listed under there were my apps, right? And they didn't do, like, I knew they didn't do any of the design, they didn't do any of the, the code, I, mean, I had to fix a lot of the code myself. So even though it went on to the, to the app store and they had done you know, a, a good deal of work on the back end, the code was, was really not great and they didn't do any of the design work. Of course, when you're looking at the app on the app store and you're looking at how polished it looks and how professional it looks, a lot of that has to do with the design they had nothing to do with. So my cautionary tale to you, for those of you who, who are thinking about working with a company, if they, if they give you a portfolio of apps and it's not their own application, so you know, they've done it for clients, which is cool, that's fine. You know, not everybody does apps for themselves too. Uh, you know, check to see whether or not that, that designer who worked on that is actually the designer that's gonna be working with them or if that came with you know, their client brought in the designer or the, you know, like that was the case with me and everything. And, and if, if that designer is with them, is that designer going to be working with you on your project if you really like that kind of work? So it's just something to look out for. And I was just 
I was really kind of annoyed with it. And it was one of those things where I, I, I would complain, but then I thought maybe I shouldn't complain. And this, to this day, this is the reason why I don't list clients on my website, on the Overpass website, right? And we've had some really good clients, right? And so, you know, and I, every so often I'll look at other app development company websites. And I think, oh, you know what? We should put these guys, this their logo on our website. And I think, I don't really want to ask them. That's one of the things that, you know, I just, it would bother me if I didn't go and ask permission first and I just, I can't be bothered, right? Besides, when clients come and, and they're looking for an app to be developed, they're not, you know, the story's not about us, it's more about how we can help them. So that's always been my, my philosophy on that. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Would that bother you if you hired a developer and then all of a sudden they started using your work to promote their services without checking with you first? Uh, anyway, that's it for today. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.